So that's interesting. And I don't want to put words in your mouth. So taking a step back, so I, want, I really want to drill into this because it's something that I think is, um, isn't is spoken about enough is the co-founder paradigm and how to establish it. Yeah. Because first of all, I think that um, you, without saying it, you're saying that if you identify a co-founder, what you're doing is you're saying you've got to have some serious self-awareness to realize you need a co-founder. Because... I, when, when I started a company, like if I just sat there and I'm in the gaming industry and I would have been like, I don't know anything about video games. <laughs> you know, I know a bit about starting companies and generating revenue, but I don't know about about gaming. So you've got to look at yourself and tick those Work boxes. Out, yeah, where the, where the gaps where the gaps are. The gaps, yeah. And then if someone has that, that's why I think, uh, is that why it's so attractive to you guys to have a, a co-founder? Because you've got, like, you've got one founder who's self-aware enough to realize he's not perfect. So he's going to find other people. And that's a powerful skill set. So we, we, I mean, we did the analysis and you see co-founders, you also see diverse teams. Um, the, the outcomes are just more, they're, they're, they're better, the outcomes yeah. uh, versus sole founders. That doesn't mean that being a sole founder, you can't succeed. It just means that the odds are better if you co-founders. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, and, and then you have to kind of rationalize why that is i haven't seen any research this way so i have various hypotheses one of one is like you're bound to have terrible days and you're also you know as um you were describing earlier on sometimes you're, you're sat there in the middle of the night just unable to sleep worrying about things and if you wake up the following morning and you you're absolutely be and you're like i can't go can't go on with this but you've got someone else who's next to you, two, you know, one, two, three other people next to you who are... Maybe not in the same bed. Not in the same bed. Yeah. <laughs> next to you when you get to work, your workplace. Because <laughs> you said you wanted to know how well they knew each other. <laughs> You're not implying that... They- I, I mean, I have had uh, uh, married couples who've come on. And actually, those have tended to work reasonably well. Oh, I have this theory about that. I let me, About married couples. People was like, oh, I don't know how I feel about your your partner being... Yeah. part of the management team. I'm like, dude, she owns 50% of the shares from the fact that we're married anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I Married is different than girlfriend, relatively recent girlfriend, boyfriend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, we're diverging. Okay, anyway, so you, so you, you who's going to be there for you to support you? Yeah. So, so someone's there for, you know, you're having a yeah. tough time, someone supports you and vice versa. Um, but you also know that you're going to go through tough times. So some of the stuff that we look at is when have you gone through tough times? Um, first of all, have you have you known each other and worked with each other long enough to actually know how you how you'll experience that? Yeah, because just the very nature of a startup, because of that uncertainty and the messiness, means that you are going to have some conflict at times. Yeah, how do you deal with that in a positive way rather than a negative way, and rather kind of spiraling down? And so we'll kind of we will often kind of in the interview process press on that as to you know how 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 well are you how well are you kind of yeah navigating difficult circumstances as a team. So that's something that we will probe as well. 